Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? This is episode five from series eight and the reason I'm watching it is because it's the next appearance of Rod Gilbert and I'm getting to the point where I can just anticipate that one of Rod's stories every episode is going to be an absolute doozy. Uh, you know, last episode he... He washed a dead hamster in his mid-twenties, and I know in the past he's sold a car to pay for tapas. He's got some weird history, and uh, and he does a good job of making you doubt his stories even when they're real. So I'm looking forward to another strong episode from him. It, like I said, this is episode five from series eight. Let's jump right into it. So on David Mitchell's team tonight, a TV presenter who effortlessly mixes brains and beauty, like a sort of female Rob Brydon. It's Carol Vorderman! <laughs> and a comedian from Wales, so like all Welshmen, he's just happy to be indoors and out of the rain. It's Rod Gilbert! <laughs> An interior designer who was recently hired by the Beckhams. It was an easy job. Victoria has a tiny interior, and David hasn't got much upstairs. It's Kelly Hoppen! <laughs> and the thinking woman's comedian. If that woman is thinking, God, what was I thinking? It's Hal Cuttenden! Rather than use a flannel or a sponge, I wash with an orange. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> How do you use the orange? Well, I mean... Instinctively, I think Carol doesn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> Citrus fruits are known to be very good for your skin. So if you cut an orange in half mm -hmm. and you use it on your face, the citrus oh. goes into your pores. So you use both halves like that? Absolutely. The best bit is to then take the other side of the orange and buff your skin. Oh. I'll tell you what, this is a northern man's nightmare, washing and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm 73, and uh, it's fantastic. And you smell so fabulous. Can I, uh, can I come over and have a smell? Oh, the old Welsh chat up line. <laughs> I should be able to Well, smell. has she done it today? <laughs> I didn't smell any orange. Did you not? No. Right. You told me no. earlier today that you had a stinking cold. Yeah. I have got a stinking cold. Well, so there you go. <laughs> so now you've got it. I didn't realise you had a blocked nose. Allow me. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> so many exfoliating creams that have orange or citrus in. None of them are an actual orange, though. <laughs> I've seen shampoos with coconut in, but I've never actually washed my hair just with a coconut. <laughs> that would be exfoliating, though, wouldn't it? That you could draw blood with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going out into the world, essentially, with a soft drink on my face. <laughs> <laughs> a wet orange peel is no exfoliator. No. <laughs> I would live and die by that statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it does is it gets all the. No, it doesn't. It does. <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. It a lie. is a lie. Yeah. Yay! She almost had me. Almost had me. I once had a holiday in a Frenchman's garage. <laughs> Can I check if this is a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, how old are you, roughly? Thirty-eight. 30... Oh, this is oh, quite recently. Would it happen? Yeah. Where, where was the garage? France. Whereabouts in France? <laughs> Northern France. Whereabouts in Northern France? <laughs> Brittany. In Britain. Okay. So you ended up in Brittany. Southern Brittany. Southern Brittany. Okay. And you the northern end of Southern Britain. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just uh, just <laughs> south of mid Brittany, isn't it? <laughs> the town tell? where I stayed in the Frenchman's garage was Van. You're in the van in the garage. <laughs> no. Rod, let me speak to you as another Welshman. Maybe he'll understand me. <laughs> Did you book a holiday in a Frenchman's garage? No, I once had a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> when you arrived in the, in the village or town called Van... Yeah, Van, yeah. Did you already know you will be staying in a garage? No. We thought it looked nice in the brochure. Who did? Me and my partner. Partner? Girlfriend. Girlfriend? Now wife. <laughs> Blimey, that was a quick ten seconds. <laughs> we went to we went to Van. Right. Went to a tourist information place. They said, "What about this place?" And we said, "That looks nice. Lovely. The house with a nice pool. Looked nice in the picture." And when you got there, it was a garage. 
Yeah. The house was nice, but we were in the garage. It looked like a room with a canoe on the side and a fuse box. <laughs> you don't go on a crazy, we're not going to book where we're going. 38, you want to know where you're no, going? No, I went around the world if it is true, you it in the mid-40s. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't enjoy it. So you liked the sort of... It was a deliberate rough No, it was a disaster. Was it? <laughs> How long did you stay for in the garage? Two weeks. You stayed for two weeks? <laughs> it was very reasonable. <laughs> and you said there was a swimming pool? Yeah, they had a swimming pool. You were allowed to use it? No. <laughs> Absolute lie. Use a lie? Absolutely. Why two weeks in one little town in Brittany? And no, but nobody would go and stay in a garage without windows. But I think they wouldn't. Sort of You're Kelly like... Hoppen, though, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. He's Rod Gilbert. <laughs> mm-hmm. The length of time is what throws me. I, I think it's true, but I'll go with my team and say it's a lie. I'll say lie. Truth garage lie. holiday in the Frenchman's garage in van. Two, oh. Two whole weeks. Wow. <laughs> I bought the rest of it. But what would you do for two weeks in Brittany? Please welcome this week's special guest, Gary. This is Gary, and he's a feng shui expert. And in order to improve the flow, the energy flow in my home, he advised me to get rid of my cat litter tray. The whole thing about feng shui is that it's all about energy lines in your home. Like where the sockets go. Well, no, like drains <laughs> will, will mean... <laughs> And where my litter tray was, was really my... Was your litter tray? No, my cat's <laughs> litter tray. I'm not a feng shui specialist, which is why I got Gary in, so he explained it to me. Was his opening line, are you a feng shui expert? And you said no. Did he go, good. <laughs> <laughs> What, what do you put there if it's inappropriate well, you for need a cat to put litter tray? A, you need to put a crystal or something that enhances the area. The difference between a crystal and a cat litter tray is that one thing has a purpose and the other thing is some tap that you should throw out. <laughs> was anything else wrong with how you no, had your actually, house? No, everything else was really good. I mean, what, that was it. No, what? Who should you pay him for that? He just moved the litter tray, but there you go. That job done. No, no, Eight no. grand, please. No. <laughs> that should help the wealth corner. Well, certainly mine, anyway. <laughs> So where did you put the litter tray? I got rid of the cat. Oh, my God. I didn't really. I'm really joking. Was that the one French person going, that is perfect? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Well, this is Gary. Last year, I kicked a football through my kitchen window and Gary agreed to take the blame. Uh, hang it. on. You kicked a football? Yes. <laughs> uh, we're, but both our kids are at the same school. Right. Well, that's certainly plausible. It is many, many schools have more than one child out. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing football in the garden, and my wife had already made a comment, oh, messing about don't break the window, and then we ended up messing about, and, yeah. And you kicked the ball, and it went through the window. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, my wife is going to kill me! <laughs> she wasn't joking on no. any level! No. <laughs> she this could and be she... it for my marriage! <laughs> he offered to take the blame. He said, I'll take the blame for it, because... He's a bit more of a sort of, what's the word, scallywag type character. <laughs> I don't understand this modern no, street he's... talk. <laughs> this is Gary. Together, we were involved in a low speed pedalo chase <laughs> <laughs> when a Spaniard had nicked <laughs> Gary's tail. Uh, we've reached that stage in the, the Mac Mitchell relationship where everything is a lie. Where were you and Gary, and where did the Spaniard come from? Uh, Spain. Yeah. <laughs> we were on a beach. In oh, Spain? Not in Spain. <laughs> Spain. So he'd come a long way, this assailant. He'd obviously heard about a valuable towel. <laughs> he was a oh, possibly. Yeah. He was on holiday. <laughs> uh, so, so, Lee, um, as that's my Chinese name. Yes, <laughs> so what happened? So, Lee. Um, I was... Uh, I was... <laughs> I've been known each other long by that point. No, I was strolling lonely on the beach. <laughs> I, and I saw a young gentleman in some tight shorts and I thought, hello, fancy a pedalo ride? <laughs> we decided to, to, to rent out a pedalo and go into the sea. So that's yeah. what we do. We go out onto the pedalo and we start to pedal and, and oh, it's yeah. great. So then we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of coming back to shore. Well, I'm literally least. doing the action now with my feet. I'm, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the three of you on jet skis from here, to be honest. <laughs> we see a gentleman suddenly grab Gary's tail and he puts it on the pedalo on his girlfriend's seat and off he goes. So what do we do? You give chase. We give, we give chase. <laughs> and you said, excuse me. Yeah, I wound the window down and I said... Uh, <laughs> I had to mime it. I sort of went, I yeah. said, uh, you, um, uh, and then you mm, sort of... 
it's of mind, I'm sorry, and handed the girl to us, and we went, no, 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 no. <laughs> we've got it all wrong, we've got it all wrong. <laughs> anyway, right. that's how I met my wife, and that's... <laughs> They're all almost believable. I'll take the window, but... I, we don't think it. We don't think it. I don't think it is. Don't think it's Kelly. What about Hal? Hal. Um, I, well, I think that sounds very plausible. Except the children bit. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have children, do you, Rod? Do you? I don't have children. Oh, two nil. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say Hal. You're going to say Hal? Yeah, okay. I think it's Hal. I think. But I will not be surprised if I'm wrong. My name is Gary, and I advise Kelly. Yeah! Ah! Gary. David would like to explain to you why the whole thing's a crock of rubbish. <laughs> uh, well, David's not getting a discount at his house, but I imagine a, do a bedroom door that can't be opened because it doesn't have a handle is probably a bad thing. I used thing, to have a job too. in a safari park gift shop and regularly shared my bed with a lion cub. It was in the mid 70s. Which safari park? Windsor. I lived in the safari park <laughs> at the time you did. with my sister. But how could What's you live whoa, whoa, whoa. in... Sorry. She's human. <laughs> she lived in the safari park with her husband, yeah. who he worked name? with the animals. He would bring home the little babies who'd been rejected by their mothers. Oh, God, you're going to make me go. Oh. And then <laughs> there was a penguin in the bath and a lion cub in my bed. So I slept with a lion cub. Carol, nothing happened, did it? <laughs> it did. It, no, it, it did. <laughs> no, it only happened when my mum came down from Wales oh. and she walked into the bedroom and screamed. I bet she, she did. Saw... How big is the cub? Are we talking, like, very young? Or... Well, when I got there, it was that big. Oh, yeah. It was that big by the time she'd yeah. finished. <laughs> did you sleep with any other animals while you were there? <laughs> no, she genuinely didn't No, I had a bath with a penguin. You Obvi did. Obviously. What? I buy it. I buy it. I think, I think it could be true. The penguins are yeah. totally extraneous so detail, but she added so it. so convincing. Just, when you say... I wish it was on our team. You're not... Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll go true. I'm, I'm, I'm malleable. Yeah, true. I'm malleable. <laughs> true. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whenever I see my postman, Roy, he shouts, Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And won't move on until I have replied. Roy, Roy, Roy. 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 <laughs> oh, the writers have so much fun with Mitchell. Does he only do this when he's at your door, or if you pass him in the street? It's, it's whenever I see him. Whenever you see him. Yeah. So and I obviously I try and avoid him. <laughs> <laughs> he is friendly, but um, What's his, know, name? He's, he's, uh, his, his name is um, Roy. <laughs> uh, uh, Oggy. No, Roy. <laughs> Talk us through the very first time this happened. He rang the doorbell because it was a uh, recorded delivery thing. What was it? And what was it? I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> he's rang the doorbell and then what happens? Uh, I, I'm not in. So, <laughs> on another occasion, yeah. with a different delivery, I am. I opened the door. Why, is he not knocked? <laughs> Before I'd rung the, he'd rung the bell. Yeah. No, did, or did I ring the bell? No, no you it must have been him. No. Um, <laughs> well, I signed for the thing. He says, oh, uh, are you, uh, you're off the telly, aren't you? I say, yes. And I say, oh, I must be hallucinating. It seems like I'm on the doorstep. Oh. Um, <laughs> and uh, he goes, oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet me. Yeah. Great <laughs> moment. <laughs> Great <laughs> moment. The next time... I see him. Oh, it's you... out on the street. Oh. He goes initially, oh, he hello. Then he goes, <laughs> Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. <laughs> wow. He makes me, he goes, Roy, 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 like in a questioning way. So. And I go, <laughs> yeah, Roy, Roy, Roy. Does he do it to everyone? I'm a funny person. Yeah. I, I mean, peculiar. I'm, I don't just, you know, <laughs> ha ha, I, I'm not saying it's not up to me to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm a peculiar person in that I hate this. But I would be hurt if I thought he did it with everyone. Talk us through the second incident now. OK. <laughs> I remember it as if it were yesterday. <laughs> right. It's quite early in the morning. He's right at the top of the road on the corner. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll be the postman. Oh, OK. Yeah. Rob, you'd be whistling, I think. I was about <laughs> to whistle. <laughs> now I'm coming out of the front door, slamming the front door, walking along. <laughs> oggy, oggy, oggy! <laughs> <laughs> oggy, oggy, oggy! Roy! Oggy, oggy, oggy! Roy, Roy, Roy! Yeah, 
I think it's a lie. It's got to be a lie, but it's awesome if it's hilariously true. a lie. Yeah. Lee's team have won by three points to two. My individual liar of the week this week is Kelly Hoppen. Hoorah! Good night. Another great episode. Um, so much happens in just a, a 25, 28 minute episode. It's kind of crazy. I, I love how much David and Lee give each other a hard time when they've been given an obvious lie to try and sell. How, how much they force each other to to go through all the gory details. It it, it might be my most uh, it, it might be my favorite part of the entire show is just how much they take the piss out of each other. Um, it's you know they they're just such different personalities, but they know each other so well. You know at this point after eight series, you know they they just filmed fifteen like. They know exactly how to grind each other's gears and it's really it's 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 hilarious to watch so i really enjoy those moments and there's always a few of them in every episode thank you guys for joining me as always until next time take care stay healthy and we'll see you soon cheers <laughs>